This is a breakdown of the dead microbe vaccines. There's the dead bacteria and the dead virus. That's the simplification. In the breakdown, you have killed bacteria, you have the gene viruses, or the virus-like particles, and then you have the inactivated virus, which is merely crippled. Um, both of these, the killed and the gene virus vaccines, need adjuvants, and very strong adjuvants, of course, so as they all are, and the inactivated virus doesn't need any. So starting with the killed bacteria, they kill them in two different ways. You can use phenol, which explodes the cell. This represents bacteria with its little flagellas around it and everything. Yeah, it's exploding it. The formaldehyde works differently. These represent the proteins on the membrane of the bacteria and the formaldehyde will bind them together by cross-linking them and that's how you can preserve dead tissues from breaking down, dead proteins and the dead body from breaking down. Um, now because this killed bacteria is no longer a threat to the immune system, they have put adjuvants in it. The main one they use in all of them is aluminum, which belongs in rock and is far more powerful than you realize its effect on um, our systems. and for the, and then they add the toxins. They use the minimum MLD, minimal lethal dose, of these toxins for 50 pounds in children and 100 pounds in adults. They use diphtheria and they use tetanus. And because they're using the minimum lethal dose for 50 pounds, they have to add the antitoxin for both diphtheria and tetanus. Now they've also developed the mutants uh, toxins of both diphtheria and tetanus, which they use um, to piggyback on. Now, the four main bacteria that they use are the not going by their symptoms but by their names. Um, whooping cough is pertussis, and that uses the minimal lethal dose toxins. The other three are Neisseria, which they call meningitis, and Hib, which is a natural resident that helps fight off uh, the strep, which is called pneumonia. Um, so what do you have? You have the bacteria proteins here. Um, this is what's inside the formula, inside the syringe, inside the vaccine. You will have the bacteria protein. That is what the immune system is going to target. But to get it noticed, they have added several adjuvants. They add aluminum, they add diphtheria toxin, for example, and then it's antitoxin. Now, the gene virus doesn't exist as a virus. It exists in the host cells. They, this is the um, um, HPV. Uh, oh no, actually the HPV has the, um, it has the little spikies. It, it's round and, and it's the H, the Hep B that has the little spikies on it. So this is Hep B, and what they've done is they've taken the genetic material and put it inside of the yeast genes. Now, you no longer have this virus, you have it existing as genetic material within the host cell, which in the case of the gene viruses for Hep B and HPV, are, they are using yeast. Um, so what happens is the genetic, the, gene, the now altered genes within the yeast, it's going to produce on its membranes, it's going to secrete the antigenic material um, that is the target material for the immune system onto its surface. This then becomes the vaccine. This yeast is ground up and it by itself for children um, zero to six years of age, which is the age they um, target for children's vaccines. They don't need any other adjuvant than the yeast itself because this is a foreign protein and foreign proteins are um, definitely something the immune system is going to um, target. And the salmonella toxin is something they add for those older, um, for those over seven when they're giving them HPV shots, for example. Um, and salmonella, here it is with this little flagella, very toxic on its own right. Um, and the, um, so here's a, a diagram of what's going on. You've got the yeast 
um, molecules with inside of it are the virus proteins excreted by this ground up yeast. It's all in here. So they've attached it to the aluminum adjuvant and salmonella toxin. Now the inactivated virus is literally inactivated, but um, it's been crippled. It's, it's, it, and it needs no adjuvant because it is still alive. They do not add aluminum. They do not add toxin. Why? What am I talking about? Well, they use formaldehyde to inactivate the virus. Formaldehyde cross-links proteins, as you saw, but viruses are very different. Even though flu has a membrane around it, this can be destroyed easily by the formaldehyde as any membrane, but the capsid, which holds the genetic material inside it, is like the hard shell of a seed. And the formaldehyde, is simplified to form here, is left 12 to 72 hours soaking the viruses um, in a solution that's 40% formaldehyde. Um, uh, this is overnight, this is over the weekend, they, they can't do it any longer because of the reversion that happens with formaldehyde. So um, they do it for a brief period of time. What does that do? That does a random cross-linking. So a lot of it's neuraminidases and hemagglutinins, they're, they're still functioning, they're still happening. Uh, the virus can still enter the cell of a recipient of the vaccine. This represents the cell with the nucleus and its genetic material. The virus can still dump its DNA in here and through transformation it can do its job. Um, the BLP, which is uh, um, something made from um, the formaldehyde, is, is it's a beta propio uh, lactone of sorts and it's soaked for one hour in a solution that's a mere uh, 0.25%. Not very long time. It will start to revert too. Um, so that's what you have. You, they use this for polio, hep A, and flu. This represents the flu. It's crippled. They, they've cross-linked some of it, but it's still able to enter the cell, dump its DNA, and at that point all bets are off. So there you go. These are more the details. The rabbit hole gets deeper when you start looking at what's really going on. You can see that these toxins are way too powerful, and this is still alive, doing something. Thank you.